Welcome to the Statistic NDD YouTube channel. Today I want to talk about GDplot2 and the grammar of graphics and specifically about the four advanced layers and give you a quick introduction to these. If you're new to GDplot2 and you don't know about the grammar of graphics, you might want to watch the previous video that is also linked to in the description where I gave a quick introduction to the grammar of graphics and focused on the three basic layers. So there are seven layers in total in ggplot2 and the grammar of graphics and the three basic layers need to be specified for each plot otherwise you don't get a valid plot so you always need to specify data, aesthetics and geometries and then there are four advanced layers that you may or may not specify so they're optional and so this video gives you a quick introduction to these four advanced layers we'll talk about facets uh, which enable us to display subgroups and separate plotting areas. We'll talk about statistical transformations, we'll talk about coordinate systems, and lastly about themes. Our starting point is a basic scatter plot, and once again I use the diamonds data set that ships with the ggplot2 package. And to display the more than 50,000 data points here, I reduced point size using the size parameter here and I introduced some opacity um, so that we get darker and lighter areas so that we can get an idea of how many points overlap in certain plot regions. And now we want to build up on this plot. So the first advanced layer that we look into is the facets layer. So here you see the highlighted code gives us a one-liner that is enough to get five subplots for the five levels of the cut variable. So there are five types of cuts in this data set from fair to ideal and with this simple one-liner we get five subplots. So this is one of the strong points of ggplot2 I think. Compare this to a workflow where you would create five separate plots in Excel for example and then arrange them somehow in a report or a presentation. So here you get one plot as a result. It's one image and you can specify the layout using the enrow and end call parameters, which I didn't do above, so you could specify how many subplots um, shall be displayed per row or per column. And alternatively, you can use the formula interface using the tilde notation that you may know from um, statistical models. Um, you can also facet by more than one variable, and an alternative to the facet wrap function that I show here in the code is the facet grid function that enables you to specify a grid of um, X and Y coordinates, so two variables. Yeah. Right, the next layer we want to look into is the fifth layer, statistical transformations, and here I simply add a linear smooth to the scatter plot to see trends in the data. So the key function here is the geom smooth function, and I specified the lm function. And I think it's easy to see that the linear smooth is not a very good fit for the data. Um, the line extrapolates far beyond the range of valid data points, so at least for higher levels of karat, a linear trend doesn't seem appropriate. We'll pick on that uh, and improve that in a minute. First let me say that um, Statistical transformations um, can come with the geom function that you see above, geom smooth, but you can also check out the stat underscore family of functions um, to apply more transformations. A use case or an example would be to use the stat summary function to show means in box plots. You know that box plots by default only display medians, and sometimes it's nice to add means for comparison. But now let's improve on our linear fit and we apply a nonlinear smooth here using the GAM method. GAM stands for a generalized additive model. It's a very powerful and flexible method for nonlinear smoothing lines. Um, so here you see that our smoothing line now does not um, extend beyond the range of valid data points. And we see that for the lower levels of karats, we have an almost linear trend, but then it levels off and we get wide confidence intervals for the higher ranges of karats because there are very few data points. You can suppress this gray shaded area for the confidence intervals if you like using the SE parameter. Um, yeah, but I think here we have already made an improvement. 
So let's move on to the next layer to keep this video short and crisp. Um, we talk shortly about coordinate systems. So in this case, since both the price and caret variables are heavily right skewed, um, we may want to try out, try out um, logarithmic transformations. And you see here that um, we have convenience functions. So the scales are specified with a scale underscore family of functions. And here for the x and y um, axes, I can use the scale x log 10 and scale y log 10 functions respectively. Um, there are more options for transformations. So if you don't find a convenience function like this for the type of transformation that you want to apply, um, you can use the scale underscore x underscore continuous function or for the y axis that matter and use the trans parameter to specify a different type of transformation. And if you don't find your desired transformation there, you can even create custom transformations using the scales package and the trans new function that I have indicated here at the bottom left of the slide. Right, uh, we also see that um, for the y-axis we can use a convenience function from the scales package to label the price in dollars. So this saves us some work for manual formatting and we can use this. So there are convenience functions also for currencies, for example, and so on. Right, I think this is also an improvement um, for a fit. You see now that the leveling office is in a smaller range of the data. Of course, logarithmic transformations have this disadvantage of being harder to interpret, so you must think of your audience. Um, by the way, the Financial Times did a great job explaining logarithmic scales in the context of their COVID-19 um, reports and, and visualizations, so you might want to check that out. Right, the last layer that I want to talk about is the themes layer, the seventh layer. So now I don't repeat the full plotting code, but instead I assign the plotting code to an object here, just called p for convenience, and then I can play around with themes, just adding the theme function p plus theme classic in this case. So theme classic is part of ggplot2. Um, compare that to theme dark, which has become quite popular, I think. Um, so we can move back and forth between these two, and you easily see how they look different, even though technically the plots are the same. There are more themes in the GDPlot2 package. You can look for them using the question mark theme underscore function, and then you get a context menu in our studio that shows you the themes that are available. And if that's not enough, you can use extension packages. So here's an example from the GG themes package and a plot that is in the style of the Wall Street Journal, theme WSJ. Um, you can use the same help function, theme underscore, when you have the GG themes package installed and loaded to see which themes are there. And if that's not enough even, um, you might want to have a look at the HRBR themes package or the GG tech package. Right, lastly, um, if you don't find the theme that perfectly suits your needs, you may want to adjust themes manually. You can also do that and apply some customization. So here's a simple example. The starting point here is the default theme gray, and then I removed the gray background using the panel background parameter. I removed the grid lines and I changed the font color for the axis labels to dark blue. You can discuss, of course, if this type of theme makes sense, but I hope it illustrates you how you can manipulate themes. Advanced topics would be to create a full theme that you can use as a function, so you don't have to specify all these parameters for every plot. Um, and an even more advanced option would be to create your own package with your own theme. Right, that's it for today. I hope you found this helpful. All the best for your data visualizations. Have fun exploring all the options that ggplot2 and the extension packages offer. Um, yeah, all the best. If you like the video, give it a thumbs up. Consider subscribing to the channel if you haven't already. That really helps. Thank you. All the best. See you next time. Ciao.